It's October 11th. It's 2023. I'm going to be your host tonight, Dana Durnford. Encourage you to subscribe and click the bell. Blah, 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 blah. Get, do some protesting. They don't want your stinking nuclear power. I'm on YouTube, my apologies. I'm not really on YouTube. I'm not allowed to stream on YouTube. The nuclear industry has got my IP address, I think, hacked. Ah, oh, there they are, the nuclear industry. Hello, scumbag. Yeah, I know. Get on out of here, you weirdo. Okay, so... Here we go again. It's Wednesday. Wednesday. There's no safe level of radionuclides exposure. Whether it's from food, it's from water, it's from breathing it in, any other sources. So that means this is a genocide. Doctor says radium starts stops agony of all kinds of things. They had radium toupees, radium makeup for children. These uh, people, victims, died horrible deaths. And then they would come out with another radium this or radium that to get around the previous genocide. And now they use all kinds of it and everywhere just to kill you. Japan foreign minister, stop claiming that the food is safe, scumbags. Which is a great point because Fukushima was nasty. Japan Times column as the public, possibly worldwide, sickens over time, the truth will come out about Fukushima. Do you think they're talking about tritium? Anybody think they're talking about tritium? Kidneys accumulate the most radioactive cesium. What about uranium, plutonium, americium, neptunium, strontium, and all the other fission products? By the way, it was discovered that human kidneys are at least 50 times less efficient than animal kidneys at removing plutonium. And what that means is the studies they're doing on animals and then saying they can relate that to humans is wrong by 50 magnitudes. It's a genocide everywhere you look. Government reports said that if Fukushima containment vessel was damaged, and what year was that, 2012? If the containment vessel, and so the containment vessel is at the very, very top of these stumps. I don't know why they left the stumps there of reactor three and four. They just, they might as well, there's nothing there. The fuel pools were way above it. The reactor cores were way above it. They left it there to manipulate you, and it looks like it worked. Obviously not to my regulars. They understand the difference, but to the rest of the world, they're in unconscious land. Leaked email shows the British government worked with nuclear companies on public relations campaigns to downplay Fukushima and that the degree of collusion was shocking. EDF, Arriva, Westinghouse. EDF and Arriva are both France, by the way. A British official told Arriva, we need to quash any stories trying to compare this to Chernobyl. Well, I mean, each of these buildings, not counting the fuel pools that had five to ten reactor cores in them, but each building was equal to at least a hundred Chernobyls because it's pure uranium, a pure plutonium. We need to ensure the anti-nuclear do not gain ground. Chernobyl was a graphite reactor. 
This was a Medusa. This was Reactor 3, a mixed oxide fuel. Uh, Chernobyl was a graphite reactor. Chernobyl was a graphite. Oh, uh, before we go any further, I went in and picked up more equipment because I'm stupid. And we're trying to resolve the microphone issues. Let me put that up there. We'll just play this clip from this evening a few hours ago. It's October the 11th. October 11th. I'm at the Lone and McQuaid. We got a good deal on uh, some mic equipment. It's uh, 555. So we got a new preamp for the microphone and we got a, a really good deal on a display. For an EQ. Didn't come with the case, but I get an extra year's warranty with it. And so that's a big deal. We're gonna try to fix that freaking microphone. We got a fantastic microphone. We got a sure microphone, see? But um, a lot of my equipment is old and it's, it's just not keeping up with each other. So hopefully this will make a difference for everybody. That's the plan. That's the plan. That's the plan. And so it's going to take me a couple of days to get through the manuals and everything else. It was a struggle for the last hour and a half just to get it to work. And I can see the difference there already, but I'll fine tune it by hopefully Sunday. And so we saved uh, over half price on the equalizer. And 150 or so off the microphone preamp. Uh, much more high quality than what we were using. And because that stuff got us tortured over the years. Anyway, um, so we're officially using that now. I'll, I'll get it better. But. Um, the difference is amazing on my end. Leaked email. Oh, hang on here. Leaked email showed the public relation firms, which is all media worldwide, all universities, all academics, it seems. Let's keep rolling here. We need to occupy the territory and hold it. Um. So they didn't want you to see that. And if you tweet that out or or uh, Instagram or Facebook or social media or get it in your media, get a conversation going, get out there and protest with placards of these two reactors. And the official story is quite amazing. As of July the 13th, 2023, they're now claiming nothing got out of the buildings that don't exist anymore. And each building had around 10 reactor cores in it. And if you divide 1.32 grams of salt by 22, so if you divide that salt 22 times, and one of those pieces of the pie is what they're saying, gets out of the reactors every year starting this year on August the 24th. So up until August 24th, nothing got out. And the reason they're doing it is because they killed the planet. And it takes a little while for it to manifest. And over the last 12 years, it's manifested. We've done major research expeditions to quantify those assertions. Huffington Post listed CNN as an external stakeholder in the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Alongside of the nuclear industry, pro-nuclear blogs, both outlets helped the Non-Regulatory Commission, also known as the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, to increase online influence as CNN produces pro-nuclear infomercials. They actually produced a whole bunch of popular YouTubers, which turns out to be degenerates, like Veritasium. He, he was... He'd done a documentary for CNN. He's a doctor, by the way, in Australia. 
He done a documentary for CNN that claimed that no matter what radiation, fuel rods, meltdowns, it was equal to this many bananas or that many bananas. It was one of the lowest creatures I've ever come across. And everybody knows we've come across a lot of them things. So the internal stakeholders is the Nuclear Regulatory Commission staff. <laughs> External. Uh, AOL, I didn't even know they still existed. All kinds of bloggers. Uh, yes, Vermont Yankee. There's the Tommy Power Review. All kinds of uh, traitors of humanity in key positions to make sure you can't have a future. Closing reactors causing a mess after non catastrophic Fukushima crisis argues for building more nuclear disease factories. So here's the media, and you don't have any other voices out there to protect you. Or any out there in the, in the normal lexicon of medias and universities. Universities, they hate your guts. You have no idea if this is your first time here. You have no idea how much they hate your guts. So, like, we're in real trouble on this planet. And we get this one chance to get it right. Uh, the censorship on me has gone totally bananas. They got nobody else on the entire planet to pick on. And so that's terrifying. There's a million people out there who could do a better job than me. And they're all silent. But back in 2011, 12, 13, 14... There was dissent, and we show you a lot of that over the years. But to say the last six years, it's total silence and uh, backtracking on everything. Homeland Security funded study playing down publics. Concern over radioactive fallout has huge economic benefits. Officially, they claim they're not trying to bamboozle the population. Well, then what do you call it? This is a Neptunium dispersal based on TEPCO's total release evaluation, which is just venting, basically. The data doesn't includes dispersal models, plutonium-239, neptunium-239. That's a separate model for the plutonium. In St. Louis, Missouri... You got to realize how bad this actually was. Fallout could have affected the entire world. Well, it did affect the entire world, and it done it in about twenty days. And to your left in the bottom is twenty six days after the tsunami, and twenty days after the last reactor blew up. The detonation to the right is reactor three. It lost around. Probably 10 reactor cores they had stored in the fuel pools. Fukushima Daiichi worker, I believe the country would be evacuated if the number four fuel pool collapsed. Well, it collapsed. The, the building is supposed to be four times higher than that. They were originally 190 feet tall, 65 meters tall, 19 story buildings. Experts warn of collapse at Fukushima reactor would be the end of Japan. And because you can't see it or smell it or hear it or taste it or feel it or perceive it for the majority of the population, but you can certainly taste it if you're within a couple of hundred miles of that reactor. Radium spray company. Think about this legacy of this industry. I've never, there's nothing else on the planet compares to it. It's an absolute despicable, degenerate, revolting, hideous, monstrous, human species hate and in industry. Cleans everything but a guilty conscience. Like the people that produced the nuclear industry was producing this so-called spray, 
and you can use it, they said, for liquid cleaner polish. So imagine taking nuclear waste going in your house and polishing your furniture with nuclear waste or or disinfecting your 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 counters and everything else with nuclear waste or deodorizing your carpets with nuclear waste. Sure death to flies, mosquitoes, roaches, bed bugs, fleas. And so put it everywhere in your clothing, in your laundry, your loved ones. Polishing clean furniture. You can't you won't be able to escape it after the first application. You're guaranteed to die from it. Buggies, automobiles, marble, tile, brass, nickel, carpets, rugs, matting, part of the machinery, typewriters, sick blasters, cash registers and every other thing not mentioned. So this is absolutely sadistic. It's like telling your children to brush their teeth um, with industrial poison. And by the way, radiation is two billion times more toxic than industrial poison. Never underestimate the, how evil this industry has been and will be. You, and you can't make it up. You can't actually make it up. It would be the end of Japan. It would be the end of Japan. And like, think about that connotation. It would be the end of Japan. What are they talking about? They're talking about radioactive fallout. That's what they're actually talking about. Let me explain some of the radioactive fallout in Japan. Because why not? <laughs> It's, it's really something what they got done to the planet. Let's hang on here. The scumbaggery of this industry is like nothing else. We got nothing else on the planet to compare the insidious, monstrous legacy. There really isn't anything else on the planet that like you might think the military is pretty wicked. You, you obviously haven't met the nuclear industry. Let me just walk you through Japan, because right now they're claiming nothing got out. Surge in radioactive cesium, and by the way, there's infinite, I wouldn't say infinite, but there's over a thousand other fission products. Uh, there's 90 times or 100 times more strontium 90 for every cesium 137 made, for goodness sakes. And it peaked after about a thousand days and it'll peak for tens of thousands of days. Surgeon radioactive cesium causes incinerators to shut down near Tokyo. If you're going to shut down something because of radiation, it's permanent. No, they started to back up and continue to radiate the population. You can't get rid of the ash from the incinerators. You can't get rid of the sediment from the water filtrations, water reclamation facilities. You can't get rid of the sewage. In just one city about five years ago had uh, 55,000 one-ton bags of sediment from the water filtration which means you were supposed to abandon that community and, and everybody that drank the water or boiled food in it or got showers in it should be entitled to uh, health care for the rest of their life and, and uh, millions and millions of dollars in damages. Tokyo neighbors see some approaching levels in Fukushima the incinerator dust is 70,000 becquels a kilogram. So what they released into the environment would have been uh, 10 times that per kilogram in their communities. Dirty bombs by the kilogram. That's what we're looking at and talking about. And then uh, before the 2020 Olympics, because it didn't happen, it happened the following year because uh, you know what, and you can't even talk about certain things anymore uh, on the internet or they'll they'll uh, restrict you or bar you. 
the, the the ash from the incinerators from the nuclear wasteland and Tokyo, which is a nuclear wasteland, and should have been abandoned, 36 million people, and still should be. It's never too late to abandon Tokyo, I like to say. The dust, what they were doing was dumping it in an area where they were going to have the Olympics. They, they, it wasn't covered up, it was just dumped there. And they were doing swimming races. So every time it rained, this would turn the mud and wash down into the sea where they were going to have the races. But during extreme temperatures, a lot of it would become airborne, would dustify again, right? We're talking catastrophic numbers. Fukushima will start burning radioactive waste, 100,000 becquels a kilogram to be incinerated, 1 billion pounds of debris, 1 billion pounds of debris. Yeah, um. One billion pounds of debris. And they're grinding it up and taking it out of prefectures. The Fisher story is nothing I showed you exists. And this is a very dangerous narrative to suggest that it doesn't exist. Mystery black substance has a million backwards a kilogram of cesium all over minima soma. A million backwards a kilogram of cesium in minima soma. And notice you're not talking about tritium in any of this. And But what we're talking about is you can never go back there. And they're moving children and, and vulnerable elderly back into that in order to give the nuclear industry some bizarre street creds. 10 million back was a kilogram. These are numbers of unheard of pre-Fukushima. There, There is no way you don't get sick and die from this kind of stuff. Japan did not reveal plutonium-241 detection. It was 50 times higher than the total of the three other plutonium isotopes. So they did acknowledge like 238, 239, 240 plutonium, but they didn't acknowledge the plutonium 241 because it's such a prolific isotope. A real mystery black substance not yet measured Possibly 20 million becquels a kilogram of cesium, many times more radioactive than the local official samples. And each of the stuff I'm showing you um, will drown out the single to any tritium that is in that area. Tritium, you won't be able to measure it if there's any other isotopes there, in other words. 50,000 becquels a kilogram of radioactive cesium. Cesium is used to blood you into stupidity, to make you complacent. It's, 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 and it's a real isotope, it's very dangerous. But the biggest byproduct of radiated fuel rods is the curium isotopes, which gets no love from the media. Terrifying that the samples was from the side of the streets where the children walk by every day. I, I don't think terrifying does the like, as soon as you find that, you're supposed to move everybody out of the area permanently. Government-funded researchers have sounded the alarms, calling for immediate monitoring. 1.75 billion backwards flow per day in just one river in one city, 60 kilometers from the never-ending perpetual river, also known as disease factories now. Radioactivity of 6.15 million becquels a square meter, 60 kilometers from the meltdown. It's just, and you can, all of these are from the media's worldwide. So originally they were reporting on it. Now they're too busy cutting your throat. 1.373 million becquels a kilogram, not millisievers, not microsievers, becquels a kilogram. And when you hear microsievers and millisievers, that person hates your guts, and so does the media that ran with it. 1.37 million becquels per kilo, detected per kilogram in the excrements from worms 
60 kilometers away. Currently, all they're acknowledging is tritium. And the numbers of the tritium are so low, it's hard to imagine they can look in a mirror. Half a million backwards a kilogram of radioactive cesium found 75 miles from the Fukushima plant. 400 million becquels a square meter in a major city, and it didn't come from the much talked about iodine or cesium-137. Stunning revelations. High levels of radioactivity extensively found extensively. Japan says the air, 150 kilometers from Fukushima plant, is as radioactive as areas close to the meltdown. Now it's like really difficult to find any media using the word meltdown. Total cover up so the industry doesn't get blamed for exterminating the planet. Japan Times. Fallout from Fukushima causing problems 180 kilometers away. It's all no good. Contaminated wild vegetables, fish, wild game. And Japan Times currently over the last five or six years it will cut your throat every day of the week with lies about Fukushima. Mysterious reddish radioactive substances detected 180 kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi and alpha particles at 200 counts per minute. Now they're like, no, nothing got out. And anything that got out was 2.2 grams of tritium. It's in a thousand tanks. Four million becquels a square meter of cesium and soil samples from school in Chiba. And when they, they're using microsievers an hour, uh, using microsievers is not conductive of reality. It's a, you got like four million becquels a square meter. That's what you should be talking about. And uh, the, the microsievers and millisievers are designed to destroy your ability to have a conversation. And it seemed to be pretty effective, doesn't it? 27,000 becquels a kilogram of cesium in kindergarten near the West Coast. So you're supposed to abandon the school, put a fence around it 900 feet away around the entire site, dismantle everything and take it to a nuclear holding site for thousands of years and never use that land again. Tokyo area turned out to be as contaminated as Fukushima. Tokyo. But officially now, the news story as of a couple months ago started in, in South Korea was that didn't happen. By the way, there's four meltdowns and eight fuel pools that are gone. The building to your right, Reactor 4, that's just a handful of Western media that is pretending they're in the fuel pool. Why do you think they're doing that? Because it's like a banana, a potato chip, and walking in the sunshine? The air samples in Tokyo is 270 times more contaminated with cesium-137 than global weapons follow peak. 270 times more contaminated with cesium-137 the global weapons follow peak. 270 times. But officially that never happened, and then by proxy that didn't happen, see? Uh, the only problem with the whole thing is it happened. This is 2013, by the way, pretending they're in Reactor 40, but not this cover story right from the get-go, but they're pushing... And because he got away with that, they done the same thing then with Reactor 3 and claimed Reactor 3 all the fuel is out of the pool because you let them get away with Reactor 4. I didn't. I could have stomped on them for six days straight and have never let up ever since. Forecast shows Tokyo is under radiation threat on Sunday, March the 20th. Yeah, where could the radiation come from, I wonder? Government simulation shows radioactive plume of Krypton-85 over Tokyo, March the 15th. Krypton-85, that's not something a Superman makes. That's deadly stuff. 
300,000 becquels a square meter of radioactive iodine deposited in the area near Tokyo before the end of March. And that only included the iodine-131. There's 10 times more iodine-132, 30 times more iodine-133, 31 times more iodine-129. The iodine-132 and 133 is nine times more effective at ionizing and radiating the thyroid gland than the 131, which is really good at ionizing and radiating the thyroid gland. And because you're talking so much, you saturated the thyroid glands of all the species worldwide, particularly the Northern Hemisphere. And that means they're producing radioactive hormones, which means they end up being sterilized. And over a decade or so, the majority of them are already disappeared. High radiation levels near Tokyo linked to Fukushima, like really linked to Fukushima? Where else did 29 million becquels a square meter in the soil come from? Of course it came from Fukushima. But like, they're afraid, even back then they were afraid to say it outright. Tokyo drinking water is unsafe for infants. The government is distributing bottled water. That's permanent. You can't drink the water in Japan ever again. So stop throwing it. Get out of there where you still can. Obesity rates doubled, which is a sign of radiation brain damage in the first year. There was 865,000 extra cancers in the first year. And cancer is not the only disease. Imagine a spike, almost a million extra cancers. And everybody like, no, nothing to do with Fukushima. <laughs> Every university is busy cutting your throat as we speak. It's true that about 70% of Japan's territory is polluted by Fukushima. Tokyo is contaminated with highly toxic radiation which is two billion times more toxic than industrial poison. 276,000 becquels a kilogram of radioactive cesium. What about the plutonium, uranium, and americium, neptunium, and all the other fission products, and all the daughters? 18 million becquels a square meter. How can the world ignore that? How can anybody ignore this? How can anybody just sit in silence? That's to say your first time coming across it. Like this is un unbelievable. Just one of these headlines is unbelievable. 30 minutes of it so far, that's not unbelievable, what is? Tell me, I wanna know. I can't handle the suspense anymore. Japan Times, Cesium levels are spiking with unusually high amounts of fallout in Okuma, Tokyo. Up to 300,000 becquels a square meter. In the forests and the mountains and the hills, you can't, you can't even scrape the topsoil of these places. Not that that's any effective or anything. The reactors are still melting down. Home to the world's largest drinking water reservoir of its kind. Built to supply Tokyo. 300,000 becquels a square meter of radioactive iodine deposits in areas near Tokyo before the end of March. And again, it's on the iodine 131. Tokyo area, this is 240 kilometers away, by the way. Soil testing finds radioactivity up to Chernobyl's relocation levels at 919,000 becquels a square meter. But pre-Fukushima, 55 becquels a square meter was an evacuation zone for a nuclear plant. These numbers you're talking about, you're breathing it in. And every atom that gets in your body, think of a becquel as an atom. The atom gets in your body, sequesters in your muscles, your organs, and your bones. Your body attacks it for the rest of your entire life with white blood cells. And think of like you get a cut on your finger. And your body attacks it for five or six days with white blood cells and fixes it. Uh, 
reamination, you know, it fixes it almost perfectly, right? Within 10 days, it's like it never existed. That's some magic shit right there. But radiation, your body attacks it forever and tries to build a sarcophagus around it. You call it a tumor. That could take 10, 20, 30 years. But at the same time, it's blasting energy in every direction like an explosion. Well, that's exactly what it is, almost at the speed of light, every second. So that's wrecking chromosomes and DNA and cells and, and causing lesions to your organs. And every second is exploding in every different direction. So there's millions of cells being damaged. Your body has to repair that every second for the rest of your life too. So it has to flood the area with white blood cells, not just try to contain this assault, because that's what it is, it's an assault, it's an insult, but they call it an insult, but it's actually an assault. New York Times, the government said nothing to fear in Tokyo, and then came the test results, rolled above 1.5 million becquels a square meter near the church. Right, so how much evidence do you really need? I'll get it for you, tell me what you want, what, what'll make you happy, I'll go find I probably got it, actually. I'll, I'll, and I'll do the next show. What do you need to convince you that you, you have to fight for everybody's future? Government simulation shows radioactive plume of Krypton 85 over Tokyo. I mean, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. If somebody asks you how bad is Fukushima, that's all you need to show them is that picture there. There's 105,000 sites like that. You haven't got to make anything up. You can't make this stuff up. And so 30 million one-ton bags. Thirty million one-ton bags. But uh there's other reports saying a lot more than that. There's about sixty million tons of sixty million tons in that report. I'm saying 30 million tons, one-ton bags, which is equal to five rows of traffic around the planet bumper to bumper. There's about 60 million tons of contaminated soil that's being stored, planned to be stored, outside the Fukushima Daiichi perimeter fence. So, so 40,000 microceivers, right? Why would you, why would you talk about microceivers? What do I got down here? Hang on. 40,000 microceivers. Well, you don't, you, like, you're 240 kilometers away. You've got to measure it in physical atoms. That's what, that's why you're seeing that number in the first place. So it's, it's many, many times worse than that. And that is really, that's hellish. A microceiver is a, is a, you're talking about you can't breathe the air. You can't drink the water. You you can't you can't clap your hands. You can't sit on a couch or something like that. You're going to liberate absurd amount of radiation back into the environment. You can't avoid breathing it in constantly. Microceivers suggest that you're not breathing it in. Millisievers suggest you don't breathe it in. That you're just getting an energy, and that's not how you would only use that around the reactors themselves. But you still would want to quantify it by counting physical atoms. I showed you a lot of that already. Neutron beam observed 13 times. And uh, what they were doing, so to cover up that story, and they do this around a lot of nuclear accidents where they'll claim UFOs are hanging out over Chernobyl or Fukushima or wind scale. And what it is, it causes these these um, blue flashes is like an aurora in one way and it's caused by this huge amount of radiation pulsing energy almost at the speed of light every second and they crash in alphas and gammas and neutrons and betas will crash into each other but they won't mix they'll change direction it's known as a Bromson along a breaking effect and you end up with these flashes and so the cover story they're using for it is UFOs. It means you have an ongoing criticality when you see that or hear about it. 
Neutron rays measured in Tokyo can't be detected by most Geiger counters. Well, most Geiger counters can only detect gamma, and they don't do a very good job of it at all. You need a very expensive um, spectrometer in order to actually get some. And what you do is you you'll like you look at uh, americium two forty one. You 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 need some of it to calibrate the spectrometer, and then you can measure something and say, well, it's got this much. And numbers we're seeing in North America were six to twenty thousand becquels um, a minute. These are just terrifying numbers. And so now you would extrapolate the other isotopes from that. People in Tokyo, the black substance is there. And this is a fungus that aggregates radiation particles. And you see, you'll see it at 5, 10, 15 million becquels a kilogram. And it's all over Tokyo. And it's produced... Uh, everywhere we see in Tokyo. Radioactive dust reported in Tokyo after recent fog. Over 4,000 becquels a kilogram of cesium and never disappears. Well, I mean, you know, when you pick up 30 million one-ton bags, and that's what they acknowledge, and you're only talking about 3% of the land where they scraped the topsoil, and they were looking at 100,000 becquels a kilogram was the criteria before it went in a bag. The side rows and the top rows are supposed to be clean soil to shield people from that doses, that energy. But the bags were only meant to last one or two years. Like, imagine going down and writing on every one of these bags that I showed you, Dana is wrong. And there's 105,000 sites. So imagine 105,000 sites. you got to write on every one of these bags, Dana is wrong. At some point, you're going to say, gee, Dana might have a point. I'm not saying he does, but he, he might have a point. 50,000 becquels a kilogram with a radioactive. And you hear the word cesium so many times. If somebody says cesium to me, i, I got to put my hands in my pocket, otherwise I'm going to punch them in the mouth. It's such a lie, I don't even use the word cesium. Study contamination Tokyo suburbs three times higher than an area one mile from Fukushima Daiichi. Significant contamination in Tokyo. And that's plus one. That's a major academic journal. No, no, nothing got out, only a couple of grams of tritium, 2.2 grams of tritium. Don't worry, it's in a thousand tanks. Oh, and 30 million one-ton bags. And by the way, there's no tritium in these 30 million one-ton bags. Or they didn't fill it up with tritium. It's tritium now every time it rains there. Contamination, but the other isotopes will never go away. Contamination Tokyo suburbs three times higher. 249,000 becquels a kilogram. These are crazy numbers. In Tokyo, at 827,000 becquels a kilogram. And you got to multiply that by 64 to get a square meter. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing got out, Dana. You fear monger. Everything's in the tanks, Dana. You know, suffered 30 million one-ton bags here and... 60 million one ton bags here. Hello, viewers. Lucas here. Uh, I'm sure as many. Uh, I don't know what the hell that was. I, I almost looked around me to see where that came from. That was a video I downloaded from the internet. Let me go back to that. I can't remember what this is. Yeah, you can see the, the smoke coming from the reactors. I can't remember, this is a long time ago, I must have grabbed this, I can't remember. Krypton 85 over Tokyo after Reactor 3 exploded on the 15th. Cesium from Fukushima fell all over Japan, so let's get rid of the word cesium. And uranium 
fission products from Fukushima plant fell all over Japan, or let's get rid of that word and go plutonium from Fukushima fell all over Japan, or americium or neptunium or strontium from Fukushima plant fell all over. Cesium is used to like literally to dumb you down. And cesium is really bad, don't get me wrong, but it's been weaponized against you so you don't think about the, all the other fission products that you best think about. Japan's Prime Minister studies setting up alternative capital away from Tokyo. Because, you know, it's like potato chips and walking in sunshine. And Go down and write on all of these uh, millions of one-ton bags how wrong I am. If you're a pro-nuclear, see how long... Uh, there's not a single pro-nuclear is going to go near that, let alone say Dana's wrong on each of the bags under those terps. It's such a bullshit, excuse the language, to, to pretend that a tarp is going to mitigate what we see there. Japan unveils a plan to develop a massive government backup city 300 miles west of Tokyo. That's the mail online, by the way. What was the other one? NHK, which is the major Japanese media. Uh, Exkif. Uh, Japan's government industrial complex to create small Japan as southern India. This is ABC Australia. Local Tokyo to Tokyo officials says it became clear the radiation came further south than we thought, all the way to Tokyo. And they're at a nursery school with kids rolling in the dirt and tasting it, which means they're consuming it. That's ABC Australia. Who's going to downplay every facet of it. That was Mark Wallace. Writers obtained a secret Tokyo, this is Writers, evacuation scenario. Fukushima reactors failed as the spent fuel rods melt and mix with concrete and fall into the buildings. And then, of course, the only problem with that story was they didn't just fall into the buildings. The buildings were Two of them detonated. Two of them, the other two, reactor one and reactor two, uh, reactor one, most of them went down into the earth, liquefied at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures and burnt a hole right down into the earth. And that's emissions forever. You can't get near the building. It was over a million Beckwells, or a million Sieverts outside of Reactor 2 from the detonation of Reactor 2 and 3 and 4, I would imagine. Uh, I don't know if you agree with me, but does that look like it detonated to anybody? Or am I just making a big whoop out of nothing? Japan unveils a plan to develop a massive government backup city. I already done that one, didn't I? Hang on. Japan Times, alarming government report discussed Tokyo exodus and the collapse of spent fuel pool force rods melted through the concrete walls. Let's have a look at reactor four to the right. And see, there's no logical reason they didn't raz both of these stumps to the ground. They left it there in order to hoodwink you. Right, the only reason that they left that there. I feel a bit better there, still not back to normal. Um, but uh, I've been bothered for quite a while about the microphone, trying to figure it out. Usually with the equipment I got, you hire five people to run the shows. Uh, I forgot to do that. Oh, that's right, I didn't have the ability to do it. And so I suffered, and I apologize. And, but I felt that I should continue to blog because we're in so much danger. So the reactors blew up. There's nothing left. And what they done was they left the stumps there so they can put these contraptions over it. And by doing that, then they can pretend that they're in the building that don't exist. Now, I built... The, the now, Arnie built the assemblies for the racks, 
or the racks for the fuel assemblies, and he doesn't know what it looks like the picture to the right. He's promoting the picture to the left. Vision Iran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. And Unit 4 it has always been my biggest concern. If you watched our website, on the very first week of the accident, I was saying that if Unit 4 were to catch fire, you'd have to evacuate Tokyo. He's actually showing you in his picture. But see, the building is actually gone. So the Fisher story, this is the Fisher story, July the 13th. This is the first English version we found of it. And it seems like South Korea, Taiwan, China, and Japan have teamed up to promote this particular law. So this is a professor uh, the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering in South Korea. Uh, pretty smart, Dana. You're not a professor of nuclear and quantum engineering. Dana, shut up. I've heard that quite a bit, by the way. Now, he says it's like three sugar cubes. So he's saying the releases from all the Medusas is like three cubes of sugar being dumped into the ocean, Dana. And the media is only fake now because they don't want Dana the fear monger, see? That makes sense. If you're a scumbag, I suppose. But this is a professor of nuclear and quantum engineering saying that the total amount that got it was 2.2 grams. 2.2 grams is all that got out of the buildings that don't exist anymore. Which is equal to 1 16th of that coin they're going to be releasing each year. That's the official story. I mean, they're, they're growing food right alongside of one ton bags of radiation, for goodness sakes. And you've got to be pretty evil to do stuff like that. So they built this contraption off-site rather than assembled it. They've done the same thing for Reactor 4. At 3, rather. There's, not, there's nothing left. The, the buildings are completely gone. This is way worse. Just one of them is a thousand times worse than Fukushima. And so you had Unit 1 detonated and blew up and caught fire and caught fire and blew up and blew up and caught fire and melted down. You had Unit 2 blew up and caught fire and caught fire and blew up and blew up and melted down. And there's not an academic in the nuclear industry that when he's seen these original pictures didn't know Reactor 3 and 4, the fuel pools and the reactor cores were gone. There wasn't a single scientist, wasn't a single university professor on the planet didn't know that was gone. Not one. So when you go look up the original you know, headlines and stories in their time of Fukushima, the academics are trying to convince you that it's not gone, but there's zero possibility that South Korea, that China, that Taiwan don't know, that International Atomic Energy Agency included, which promoted that tritium and sugar cube story. There's zero possibility anybody in the International Atomic Energy Agency doesn't know it looks like that. It's zero possibility. That's uh, reactor three, I think. Yeah, and what's really interesting is, yeah, that's reactor three detonated, which is this one right here. So what makes it even more bizarre is you got explosions on reactor one on camera, which is right alongside of these. You got an explosion of reactor three on camera, which is right alongside of these. But you don't have the detonation of reactor four on camera. It's ne the footage has never been released. There's zero possibility that that footage doesn't exist. And so officially, in 2019, they said there was 105,000 sites of one ton bags, and, and by the way, this is one of them. Grown food right alongside of one ton bags of radiation. 
If that doesn't get you the scumbag of humanity award, what should, really? What really should, right? Let's see what I got here. I must have done that twice for some reason. 400,000 times normal radioactive xenon 130. There is no such thing as a normal because it's such a short half-life. It's a nasty isotope. The damage is permanent. In Chiba, and the actual figures may be higher. Well, Chiba is right alongside of Tokyo, and Tokyo was brutalized by radioactive fallout. Newly released NRC emails reveal radioactive technetium-99 was detected outside the Fukushima plant over 240 kilometers from the meltdown. Oh, it's worse than that. And that's got like a quarter million year half-life. Strontium-90 found 245 kilometers away, 155 times the background. High levels of Strontium-90, 250 kilometers from the meltdown. Carefully examining where the isotopes came from. 24,000 beck was a kilogram radioactive cesium in the soil samples. 24,000 beck was a kilogram. Over 30,000 beck was a square meter in Nagano, 250 kilometers from the meltdown. So 250 kilometers from the meltdown, you can't eat the food, drink the water, or breathe that air for many, 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 many millenniums. And the absorbed radiation doses of iodine-132 were 10 times higher than the 131. Plus the 132 is nine times more effective at irradiating the thyroid gland. And strontium was found in 2,200 locations in Fukushima. So it's not surprising it's in Yokohama, 250 kilometers away. Well, I, I showed you a whole ridiculous ridiculous amount of documentation so far about Tokyo, just 240 kilometers away. Contamination concerns are growing high radiation levels, 270 kilometers from the meltdown. And Gun Gunnarsson, man, uh, the lies Gunnarsson told, he, he doesn't need to be quoted in any of these stories. They're quoting him to try to give him street creds, see? Eh? Here's Arnie Gunnarsson, a video that I put together. And Arnie's going to try to convince you that TEPCO went in the reactor 4, went in the reactor 4 and put supports, enormous amount of supports under the fuel pools, which are at the very top of the building that don't even exist. And um, remember, he unit made the 4 cities. was... Um uh, was damaged twice. It was damaged by by a st all of the earthquakes that occurred, and it was also uh, damaged by a series of explosions over um, the first week or two of the of the accident. So the, the the building is structurally weakened. Now Tokyo Electric's acknowledged that they went in in uh, in May and June of last year. This is more than a year ago, and put an enormous number of extra structural supports directly under the fuel pool to keep the bottom of the pool from breaking through. So listen to that again, though, one more time. And put an enormous number of May in June of last year. Acknowledge that they went in actually weakened. Now, Tokyo accident. So the, the, the building is structurally weakened. Now, Tokyo Electric's acknowledge that they went in in, uh, in May and June of last year. This is more than a year ago. And put an enormous number of extra structural supports directly under the fuel pool to keep the bottom of the pool from breaking through. And so the fuel pool are at the very top of the building. There's two of them. And they have the capacity to hold five or six reactor cores each. And because they don't have a repository anywhere on the planet, let alone Japan, those things were stuffed. And look at all the media shortly after he produced that, pretending they're in the fuel pool of a building that don't exist. And that is terrifying because they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. This is not a joke. Listen, you ha they have no right to hoodwink the entire planet. 
They have zero right to be able to, or uh, zero right to do something like that. And then every university has promoted the lie instead of the truth. And the truth is so important, we can't lose sight. 300 times more radiation released into the atmosphere from burning debris and claimed by the government. Iodine-131 levels rise 350 kilometers from Fukushima's sewage plants. It's sewage plants. Because you're excreting so much radiation, right? Sorry, I was. I still got the flu, is a hanger on eating, right? The flu is still hanging around, haunting me. Let me see if we can get that. See if we can get that where I want it. Hot particles 400 kilometers from Fukushima. The radioactivity of 40 billion beckles a kilogram. Right on the side of the road, probably from the fuel pool fallout. But I mean, this is what they're picking up with the 30 million one-ton bags, which is five rows of traffic, bumper to bumper, around the entire planet. And uh, Hanford dumped so much nuclear waste, sludge, nuclear sludge. Uh, they have... Currently, you'll hear him talk about it. If you look it up, you hear him talking about 177 tanks with 56 million gallons total in them of sludge from the 40s and 50s. But what are they, it's very difficult to find what is this out there, is they dump 450 billion gallons of that same stuff in the soil. And uh, for that stuff, they have built what they call a glassification type plant where they're going to, once you turn, it's $18 billion and it's like, how many years now, 20 years trying to build it? And once you turn it on, you can never go into building it again, but it's supposed to take chunks of the nuclear waste from the 177 tanks and and put glass around it, and then, which is really liquid, and then when that cools down, then it's locked inside a glass. That's the logic, right? Well, the Wigner effect which is the gamma shines, the x-rays, the neutron bombardments, the beta rays, will break down the glass just as quick as it does with steel and cement. And, um, and so the 450 billion gallons that you dumped in the soil is equal to 1.4 million of those tanks. So they have 177 tanks with 56 million gallons in it. And they dumped 1.4 million, 1 million 400,000 of those tanks into the soil. And that's big enough uh, to build an aquarium six feet wide, 518 feet tall, wrapped around the planet more than once. The nuclear industry has to go because all the other species will go if you don't get rid of them. And it's too late now, but at least get rid of them. Hot spots are spreading. Government to check radiation up to 460 kilometers from the meltdown. I think we'll call the video How Bad is Japan's Radioactive Fallout? How Bad is Radioactive Fallout in Japan? Because I can give you similar stuff for North America, Canada, United States, right? This one, I, I just wanted to debunk. Because I can challenge the headlines, the propaganda headlines they're putting out every day about the tritium. But we, we've done that for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, right? And uh, we needed, like this week and last week, we got, I've been sick the whole time. But we managed to get out a lot of documentation, right? Rather than just challenge the proverbial daily propaganda. It comes from every direction worldwide since July the 13th. A bombardment and they had about a billion dollars for this public relation campaign it's around a billion bucks 
High levels of cesium detected in Osaka Bay soil, which is 600 kilometers away. High levels at 10,000 becquerels a kilogram, which means, and they're talking about strontium-90, and so you're going to multiply that by 64 to get the square meter. New contamination map shows cesium-137 deposited over 900 kilometers from Fukushima, uh, west of Hiroshima. So why did they build, rebuild Hiroshima and Nagasaki on nuclear bomb craters? So they can study the lab rats generationally, right? They're disgusting industries, perpetually disgusting. Japan, a high level of radioactive material detected over a thousand kilometers from Fukushima last April, which is the month after Fukushima they were talking about. Over 30 million tons of nuclear waste in Fukushima alone, smoking mounds of disaster debris, possibly from spontaneous combustion. It's nuclear waste. What do we got here? Oh, this is uh, about the sewage. Al Jazeera reporting on the sewage. Let's play that. I'm going to adjust the volume for you in real time. In a corner of the Saitama sewage treatment plant, workers take us for a look at a danger they never thought they'd have to deal with. Underneath the tarps wrapped in layers of waterproof sheeting are tons of radioactive sewage. Saitama is hundreds of kilometers away from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant. Still, in May, alarming levels of radioactive cesium were detected in the sewage sludge. Workers said the government asked the plant's employees to store the waste, but none of them have any training in how to handle the hazardous material. We're trying to study how the radiation will affect us, but we can't understand everything. That's all we can do to cope. Treated sewage used to be passed on to cement and fertilizer companies. With it now radioactive, no one wants to take it. In a hallway, the piles stretch for one kilometer. When we run out of space, then we just have to stop the operation entirely. We're already in an emergency situation, but if that happens, we're in serious trouble. There are more than a dozen sewage plants in Japan facing the same situation. Still, months after the nuclear disaster, the government has no policy on what to do with the waste. Al Jazeera requested an interview, but a government spokesman refused, saying the radioactive sewage is not an immediate danger. The government has told the public and the staff working in these facilities that the radiation threat is minimal and that the air quality is safe. However, we've been walking up and down this corridor just a few minutes and our Geiger counter has already gone off several times. Currently, it's reading 0 .60, 0 0.60.61. Soil expert Sozo Suzuki says in a healthy environment, radiation levels should barely register. This is a disaster affecting all residents in Japan. The level of danger is not that adults and children will die tomorrow, but in five to ten years' time, cancer or illness will show. We know that from Chernobyl. The government is allowing low-level radioactive sewage to be turned into fertilizer, despite warnings from experts that it will affect food in Japan. Worries over contamination have led some farmers to spend more on high-end fertilizers, free of sewage. We check the fertilizers for radiation and also where they come from. It's how we can be sure it's safe. Back at Saitama, workers have been asked to stay away from the waste when not working on it. The more cesium there is, the more the radioactivity increases. And the worry now is whether the growing piles could soon affect the people living around the plant. Steve Chow, Al Jazeera, Saitama, Japan. So... What they call low level is from nuclear fallout, and they were giving it to the farmers at that point to, to get rid of some of the numbers, right? But they're doing it all over Japan. They're burning the waste all over Japan. They're dumping it directly into the rivers and the ocean for years because the employees were the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak the language. 
And so within a few months, they had kilometer a kilometer of bags stacked up, they're saying, right? <laughs> That's the gallows laugh, folks. Radioactive firewood, 43,000 becquerels a kilogram in the ashes after you burned the firewood. So imagine how much they're actually liberating into the environment by burning it. These are dirty bombs, and it's everywhere that they're doing it. It's a death sentence for humanity and 8 million species. Fukushima government is dumping tons of radioactive mud from decontamination into the rivers at night. You can't decontaminate. It's the homeless and the destitute on top of that and the victims of society that are not motivated, don't have the education, and are unaware of what they're doing, the majority of them. They're completely in the dark on every facet of nuclear. Someone tells them it's safe and that's all they know. It's genocide in that context and it's omnicide by coating the planet with multiple blankets of this fallout. Large amounts of radioactive dust fell in Tokyo. Large amounts. Home stores selling radioactive concrete. Our houses will be radioactive sooner than we ever thought. Well, it was actually radioactive right away. Neptunium-239, that decays to plutonium-239. I don't even remember what that is, so let's move on. Japan government prepares plan to flee Tokyo, ABC News, Australia. Japan is considered the possibility of creating a backup capital city in case of a major natural disaster. It's feared that a massive earthquake like the March... It could destroy the country's political and economic base. Well, it did. And that's what was happening. They decided just to go ahead and cover it up. Mysterious black substance has a million becquerels a kilogram of cesium. All over Minima Soma. New indoor radiation dose record at Fukushima. Five sievers per hour. Well, you can't get inside a reactor one or Reactor 2, or Reactor 3, or Reactor 4, like Arne Gunnarsson was claiming, for goodness sakes. Uh, it exceeded the capacity of the measuring device, maybe higher. Well, what happens if if you exceed the capacity of a Geiger counter, you broke it, and you need to send it back to the factory to be recalibrated and repaired, right? It's broken. Yoshi Sumatsu... Uh, the former editor of Japan Sunday Times, which is, uh, is also a forensic investigative journalist, and I'd done a radio podcast with him for a couple of years on Sundays. He went in to Akuma and Futaba with three Geiger counters, and he broke all three of them that day, and two weeks later, the majority of his teeth fell out, and he basically moved out of Japan. Maybe higher as exceeds the capacity. And there's a lot of that going on. You can't measure tritium at Fukushima because the signals from everything else is going to drown out the signal from the tritium. The tritium is total absurd. You can't filter the water. It's ridiculous to suggest you can filter the water because the filter is so radioactive, about 10 minutes later, you can never change the filter. You can never walk over the hoses. Imagine running something like that for a few days. You can't get back on site, see? Fatal radiation levels found at Fukushima exceeded 10 sieverts per hour. Measuring device was maxed out. Again, that's fatal. Three sieverts is a fatal dose, by the way. 10 sieverts. Uh, where the, there was another recording where the steam was coming out of the ground at 10 sieverts per hour. But that was the max that the... Uh, the stationary um, detectors can read. Very expensive stuff we're talking about, by the way. And the steam was coming out of the ground in six places at over 10 sievers per hour. And so they had to abandon the site many, many times. And that was due to the China syndrome underground. Press watches the government dumps radioactive waste in.
Tokyo Bay. So many headlines, Japan considered moving the capital away from Tokyo. But it was due to the radiation. The original fallout was insane. I showed you endless amounts already, right? It was insane. Intelligent agency pressured researchers withhold info on the spread of Fukushima radiation. Oh, do you have other ways of keeping you silent? 12 million yen to censor Twitter being spent by the city starting to burn the disaster debris. It's radioactive debris, and that's uh, 55,000 U.S. to censor a handful of people. I was one of them. They silenced me on a number of accounts, and because I, I get pretty bored, I open different accounts to try to keep the story alive, and now they have total control over... I can't even live stream on YouTube or Rumble on the same day they started pumping water, which was a fake story. They never stored the water. You can't filter the water, therefore you can't store it. You're talking about 2.2 sieverts of beta per liter, for goodness sakes. It, these are lethal doses at 3 sieverts. So 2 liters, if you take a 5-gallon jury can of it and you you put it at a train station, anywhere at all in the platform. It doesn't need to be by the stairs or the escalator or something like that. Anywhere on the platform where people got to wait for a few seconds to get on a train. Everybody that goes there every day for a million years will die because it just allows you five gallons. So imagine uh, a million sievers, because that's based, 1.4 million sievers is basically what the tanks are going to hold, but we're only talking about better. You, you can't exclude gammas, alphas, and neutrons, for goodness sakes. So now you're talking just, uh, the numbers are so ridiculous. Say 10 million sieverts in each tank. If you put that into a tank, you can't get back on the site. That's the Medusa from thousands of feet away. If you just walk past it, you're dead. TEPCO has worked vision, so it's all dumped straight into the ocean. That's always been the old shit plan. New York Times, TEPCO has worked vigilantly to close out scrutiny of the ravaged, ravished, it's ravished. Let me have a look at it, I can't tell. Does that look ravished to anybody? Ravished. I should make up a song about that. I was ravished for the radiation. Oh, you know, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags, so obviously there was no radioactive fallout. They got 105,000 sites of one-ton bags stored. That's not bad. Yeah, I never heard of anything like it before, but it's not bad. It's all in the bags. Oh. On 3% of the land, everything is in the bags, Dana. What about the other 97% of the country? In Fukushima Prefecture. They banned food from 14 prefectures by 55 countries for a decade. Because it's like a banana and a potato chip, obviously. Tokyo Vice Governor suggested a Fukushima draft. We all of Japan must face it. Sale of foreign Geiger counters are banned. Jesus, I wonder why. They only picked up 30 million one-ton bags. No big deal. They've done that hundreds of times, right, Dana? No, oh, actually, no. Yellow Japanese uh, radioactive substances, rather, in Tokyo neighborhoods. I saw the roof of other houses. Most of them were covered with it. Most of them. Listen, man, when you pick up 30 million one-ton bags of radiation fallout, <laughs> <coughs> you couldn't drag me there with a backhoe. You couldn't do it. I'd chew off my arm before I let you drag me there. Like a beaver. Ah! More than 8,000 kilograms in Japan, or 8,000 kilometers in Japan contaminated with cesium 137 to 30,000 beckles a square meter. That wasn't the gallows laugh, I was actually laughing that time. 
Right, because the second I see 137 cesium, it's 100 times more strontium-90. It's around 90 times more strontium-86. There's uh, probably 10 times more cesium-134. Yeah, it's only got a 24-year life, but it's there, and it's nasty. It's going to be covered in curium. Curium is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods. Whenever I say that, I, I always I rarely remember to show the evidence. I show the evidence for everything else. People, why don't he show you the evidence for that? What's he trying to hide? He's a dirty scama. What am I looking for here? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Come on. La 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 la. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I think I got it. So let's look at plutonium because it's such a fun isotope. Toxicity, uh, this is uh, Dr. Raymond Gilmetti and friends, of course, from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute in New Mexico. Toxicity of inhaled plutonium dioxide in beagle dogs. Toxicity. So 144 beagle dogs and puppies, because they're very docile, sick. They don't have to worry about them biting them. They're easy victims, right? They're like the homeless, basically. They're really easy victims. Death from radiation occurred from 1.5 to 5.4 years after the exposure. They had three different types of tumors in each dog, typically. Tumors of the lungs, the skeleton, and the liver and when it's the skeleton tumors, that means you're mutating all the stem cells. So if you wonder why all the children are shown up with no hair and all screwed up, hello, plutonium, occurred beginning with three years after the exposure, bone tumors. And remember, a dog, a dog is a, a human is 50 times less efficient, I already showed you that, than a dog at kidneys filtering plutonium bone tumors whatever happened to the dogs humans are 50 times more susceptible so in the dogs tumors lungs to skeleton liver occurred beginning about three years after exposure bone tumors were found in 93 dogs were the most common cause of death humans are 50 times more vulnerable not not 50 percent but 50 times Lung tumors found in 46 dogs were the second most common cause of death. Yummy, your lung tumors. Did you ever have them deep fried? They're so good. Liver tumors were found in 20 dogs were the cause of death in only two dogs and occurred later to the tumors in the bones and the lungs. And that the tumors in these three organs often occurred in the same animal were competing causes of death. And these findings in dogs suggest a similar dose-related biological effects could be expected in humans accidentally exposed, accidentally on purpose. Everybody's exposed to 238 plutonium, for instance. And remember, a human is 50 times less efficient than a dog at filtering this stuff out and passing it out, excreting it, for instance. So the biokinetic model of inhaled cesium compounds in dogs... I think this was cesium-244, if I remember. Application to human exposure data was also Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute, which is a, um, um, a marine, na it's a Navy research institute, and they kill a lot of dogs, beagle dogs. A lot of people can't find their puppies because of this lot. Curium isotopes are the major byproduct in a radiated nuclear fuel rod and comprises a significant fraction of the alpha-emitting radionuclide inventories. And although little use is currently being made of purified curium sources, such usage is possible if you're reprocessing, which, thank goodness, is illegal in Canada and the United States, as spent fuel becomes feasible. It'll never be feasible. 
They boil the fuel rods. They used fuel rods in citric acid at 3,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. So curium isotopes are a major, major byproduct. And curium isotopes need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium that killed all the dogs and all the studies. And every one of them begs is going to be loaded. It was around 21,000 pounds of plutonium released from Unit 4 alone. Kyoto Professor... 20,000 square kilometers would be evacuated if Japan followed the law on illegal radioactive waste. Would be evacuated. And uh, we have a big list from Onsclear, the scum from UN, showing unconscionable numbers in hundreds of communities. And they quantified it by saying that it was safe, and that way TEPCO... And the nuclear industry didn't get a big fat lip and black eye every second of every day for the rest of their lives. The IAEA is disgusting. And so is Ernie Gunnarsson. All of Japan is contaminated. The government's coming up the enormous amount of exposure to the public. Epidemics are just beginning. They're in fact dying. This is the evacuees. What happened to us will soon affect all the Japanese people. And Ar Arnie sold us out. I already showed you some of that documentation earlier. I'm not going to torture you anymore tonight. Japan must be the only place in the world with several million Beckwell's radioactive isotopes in the urban areas. It's incomparably highly radioactive blue algaes in the school routes. You should abandon all of it. But to send children, and like with the headlines we got on what they've done to the children... It's unconscionable. They were in one case in Koryama City. They were stacking water bottles inside and outside the classrooms, like in the courtyard and in the classrooms against the wall. Bottles of water stacked up in crates, and it shielded the doses. They said by one third from the outside. But if if you get that much radiation, the inside is completely contaminated. It's embedded in all the paper, all the walls. All your water is hot. They should have banned in that place instead of using water bottles. When you got to put up water bottles to try to protect the kids in the classroom, you're, you literally must be an imbecile to keep the children there. You literally must be the stupidest thing that can actually tie their own shoes to. Why Fukushima is worse than Chernobyl? The truth is coming out. 72,000 times worse than Hiroshima. 72,000 times worse than Hiroshima. That's just one reactor, maybe, and not counting the fuel pools at the top of the buildings. There's four reactors have lost their... Like, Hiroshima was 20 pounds or something. I forget the number because it recovers so much for so long. My brain can't go back that far for some reason lately. It's so weird, eh? Because we cover so much information... It's almost like I have a, a, you know, like your your dash cam recycles the video every 24 hours. <laughs> My brain does it every 24 days or something. But thank God I'm so active. I'm always, I'm always revisiting it. State, not TEPCO, is liable for the nuclear damage. State in Japan. And Japan ain't going to take any pain, so... TEPCO ain't, TEPCO, so, and because, you know, and the reason this happened is because there's no accountability, there's no incentive not to be evil. Right? In North America, we call it the Price Anderson Act. And it's not illegal to poison you. Congress and parliaments and diets don't have the authority to make it illegal to poison you. Only the non regulatory agency can do that, and they ain't doing jack shit. Japan radiation expert, my results show contamination spread all over the country. <laughs> I never noticed. I guess that explains why you abandon all those communities, because it's like a banana and a potato chip. You can't go to the communities, but the International Atomic Energy Agency are in a perfect building called Reactor 4, and that don't even exist. Some serious freaking voodoo going on right there. Go down marking all of these bags. What kind of lawyer, Dana? 
dirty scammer. You can buy. You can still buy those T-shirts. 147 of Calm Down Charlie's T-shirts have left the building. <laughs> no justice in that, is it? Calm Down Charlie's officially immortalized in T-shirts up at my site. You'll find the links in the bottom of the description. Get them wider or hot, folks. All of all. Come down Charlie's famous sayings for the last decade. He's a stalker from Japan who stalked me for over a decade. And uh, I got videos on my site for Calm Down Charlie where we just let, what, what is it, Charlie? Tell everybody what I done. Knock, it, knock your boots off. And he had nothing. He had zero. And so I put that clip up there. It's like a 10-minute Calm Down Charlie uh, famous sayings. Is really something. Very scary individual. If anybody stalks you for 10 years, that's their, they mean business, folks. Radioactive substances from Fukushima belong to the landowners. <laughs> Tepco. Because <laughs> it's just like Bananas and potato chips from walking in the sunshine, Dana. Is that why you got 30 million one-ton bags there? Calm down, Charlie. That, every time I see that, it freaks me out. Eh? TEPCO, radioactive substances from the nuclear meltdown belongs to the landowners. We're not taking it. We don't have to take it. No losses. We got to take it. We're TEPCO. We're in nuclear industry. We take jack shit. We don't want to. There was just one water filtration facility. It was a couple hundred kilometers away from Fukushima. I told you this earlier. Had 55,000 bags and were producing five th one ton bags. And are producing um, what was it a day? I can't remember. It was I just had it on top of my head. Now it's, now it's gone. Blink. That's which is okay, actually. <laughs> the more I forget, the probably better I am. I had better. I can see again. As November tests showed massive contamination far outside the evacuation zone. Radioactive substances, I can't get over it, eh? 2.91 microsieverts per hour, 10 centimeters above the ground. 51 microsieverts per hour near a drainage ditch in a parking space for golf carts. Uh, again, like, you shouldn't be measuring microsieverts or millisieverts. It's absurd. You're supposed to measure physical atoms. There's, there's millions of atoms there for their cheap Geiger counters to register that much. That's, that's why he abandoned them towns, right? Can't have people walking around with tails... Uh, in the near future, and say it ain't Fukushima, see? Radiation covers 8% of Japan. There's so many different variations, and, and notice how many times you're, and when you hear cesium with a, with a A, cesium, that's the British public relations firms. They're the only one that uses the A in cesium, and they're degenerate scum. Seemingly infinite damage to daily life of residents. Top nuclear official. Japan in a desperate, seemingly endless battle with radiation. And then the guy who's in charge of the victims in Japan, and he doubles as deputy prime minister during a meeting at the National Council on Social Security Reform. Japan should let her... Let the elderly hurry up and die, says the finance minister, who later became uh, in charge of the health in uh, Japan. I, I can't see any damage, said Ernie Gunnarsson. Uh, everything looks normal to me. Everything. And we, and we see a lot of people with that, that say that. There's one of the vile creatures right here. Helen Callercott. 
She's like, no, it doesn't look like that. It looks like that. Japan is using by robots. And it does look like that. Very tidy people. I'll play the clip for you. Which is just the most bizarre statement I've ever heard. She's wrote 14 anti-nuclear books. 14. And in hundreds of interviews, she was out promoting that the buildings were like that and not like this. Let me ask you this. Uh, you've said that uh, if the spent fuel pool in number four collapses, that you would evacuate your family from Boston. Do you think we would ever know the truth of what's going on there? And the reason I ask is because we've seen coverage in the uh, national news media here in the United States from ABC News and others that uh, take video cameras in saying that they're being given exclusive access to number four in the removal of the fuel rods, which is said to have begun. Uh, and, and what we see in the, the video being shared here in America is pristine, a pristine interior building. It doesn't look like a building in which the top blew off in a hydrogen explosion. The Japanese are very tidy people and they have by robot control and by human beings removed the debris from the top of building four and it does look pristine. <laughs> Uh, building 4 is also similarly oh. fragile and it's got a huge cooling pool on top with all its fuel rods but they have been removing them uh, and it's been a very delicate procedure and they've removed almost all so if that collapsed now I think it would probably be okay. Ha ha ha! Mickey Mouse cleaned it up Dana. Jesus, why didn't somebody tell me that? I would have just let it go. I didn't know Mickey Mouse was there. I just wasted 12 years of my life covering this. That's amazing. Um, and especially Building 3 is very fragile. It's still got <laughs> a huge cooling pool on its roof, protected by nothing. The co molten core has melted its way down onto the concrete of the containment vessel, but maybe into the earth. And if that collapsed, there would be a nuclear inferno. Uh, <laughs> what a friggin' maniac, eh? So she says uh, the fuel pool is at the top of that building and the fuel pool is at the top of that building. Oh, my job is done. Thank God for Helen Keller, Cotton, or Andy Gunner, son. Have an air six, this. she done hundreds of interviews like that. This one was with uh, Talking Stick TV with Mike. He's a good guy, but he, and he didn't know any better. That's why he has the experts, right? That was like perfect. Can't wait to cut your throat, Mike. Reactor could be destroyed. Potential global catastrophe from Fukushima Unit 2. Making Tokyo area, area uninhabitable. Well, what about Reactor 3 and 4? Wouldn't that make it worse? Because Unit 2 is gone too, by the way. And Unit 1. I mean, Unit 3, 4. That's like in your face. That's gone. So much you covered the entire country in radioactive fallout. They picked up 30 million one-ton bags just in a nuclear wasteland and 3% of it just in farmers' fields and the communities that they wanted to get gullible and complacent to move back into. Experts warn of a collapse at the Fukushima reactor would be the end of Japan. They're talking about reactor 2. Look at that. New photos show serious structural damage to Unit 2. It's a fantasy they can decommission the plant. And the reason they're showing Reactor 2 was because it looks like it's intact, right? And now if you show Reactor 3 and 4, then you got to say they should have abandoned Japan. It would be the end of Japan. Melting fuel is broken pieces of the structure of the containment vessel. Containment vessels are at the top of the buildings. There is no buildings, let alone tops. There is, however, 30 million one-ton bags and just a tiny fraction. I mean, they're picking up bags everywhere, and then, then they keep growing food. They don't stop growing food there, and then they call it decommissioned, decontaminated. Radiation experts terrifying how the Pacific ecosystem has collapsed since Fukushima. terrifying well actually it's a little worse than terrifying Ter terrifying is pretty good uh, 
I went out and done research expeditions for six years. I posted the results with the GPSs of everywhere I was to. I was usually taking a thousand, two thousand pictures, but I, 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 I didn't know taking pictures was evil. And so the, the whole nuclear industry assaulted me for six years straight. Criminal, scammer, out taking pictures of the entire coastline just because of radioactive fallout. So we went out and we carried out research expeditions. Me being, I was the only one stupid enough to go do that, unfortunately. I'm still broken up <laughs> from doing it. And not only that, uh, my, my, if you go look up my name on YouTube or anywhere else, it's frightening what they've done to me. Apparently, I was the worst human imaginable for showing you the documentation, having a conversation, and <laughs> doing research. I was on the ocean four or five months a year straight without coming home. And the nuclear industry was spending those four or five months actively wrecking any facet of my name worldwide. And uh, I've been arrested and given gag orders. And the prosecutor's like, the judge's like, what's the most we can give him? The prosecutor's like, three and a half years. He's like, three and a half years? And he's like, <laughs> they're very proud of themselves. I went to a provincial court judge the following week, had a lot of the restrictions removed. The industry almost lost her mind, eh? Uh, the judge said, I uh, couldn't carry a knife. I said, can I carry a screw uh, electric drill? Because <laughs> the knife, you gotta, you, you got to do a lot of work with a knife. With a drill, you got to eh, eh, poke a hole all over him, right? And the judge looks at the prosecutor, can I carry a drill? He said, yeah, I can carry a drill. <laughs> can I carry a hammer with a big claws in it? Can I carry ice picks? Yeah, yeah that's good. I don't care about no knife. Um, so the species to your left are exterminated due to Fukushima is what I'm showing you. And we went back year after year to do the research and the species didn't come back. So after six years, all the species are gone. The insects are gone. And all the species dependent upon them are gone because the radioactive fallout covered the planet. The bottom right-hand corner is the Norwegian Institute for Research showing 468 hours, 19.5 days later, the planet was covered in perpetual radioactive fallout. So the species to your left now are exterminated, period. That's incontestable. It's unassailable. And I went and done the research, period. And I provide the documentation for those assertions up at my website, thenuclearproctologist.org, with the GPSs, no less. We've done this for six years, and the species didn't come back. And we have broken the ocean. This is why they're claiming only 2.2 grams of tritium got out, and that is equal to 3 grams of sugar cubes going into the ocean. Because they don't want this coming back in their face. And that, so that's pure desperation. It's ludicrous to come out and suggest that that never happened. And, and if it did, only 2.2 grams of tritium is all it got out. That's a whole level of scumbaggery, right? And a radiation per expert is terrifying how the Pacific ecosystem has collapsed. Plutonium and uranium, not tritium, suspected of spreading through the food chain. And the censorship on my videos is really something in it. I know I've been doing it for over a decade. I probably have one of the best operations um, As an independent online, I've never seen anybody come close to the operation I put together. And my research is incontestable. It's unassailable. And not only that, I, I take it to a different level where I provide you perpetual documentation, I think is one way you can put it. Every day I'm out there pounding the pavement and bringing it to you, right? And we 
once in a while we'll drop on the time machine and show you the legacy. And if you want to deny all of that, congratulations, you're insane. Surprised at how much cesium again, every time I heard the word cesium. I you remember when I used to make I used to make these robots and then the robots would give them a balloon head and you put eyes on them and eyebrows and noses and glasses and hats and everything else, right? At the end of the and I keep them in my arm and every time I get angry at this nuclear scientist, I punch the robot in the head, right? Because it's a balloon head and and I squeeze his head, try to bust it at the end of the show. And I couldn't bust it, I grab it, I try to tear it apart. It used to be pretty funny. Good times, man, good times. Cesium killed the pine trees as far as you can see. I, I do believe I need to start doing that again. At least it was entertaining, anyway. Are there animals that can live here? No, no. Bewilderment. Government calling on residents to permanently return inside the no-go zone 2012. It's impossible. I don't believe the plant is under control. What happens if another quake hits? They have a thousand quakes there every year. They built it where they have a thousand quakes a year and a 3,000 year legacy of tsunamis and then thought that it wouldn't happen. <laughs> sure you did. When you got 1.37 million becquels a kilogram in the excrements from the world in the entire prefecture, it's criminal to have anybody there. And this is why a lot of people just ran away, let alone if were evacuated. International Atomic Energy Agency today admitted there's no such thing as a safe level of radiation and that the standards are based on benefit, not safety. The panel said there should be sufficient justification for the project as their standards are not based on what is safe, but how great the benefit. So the International Atomic Energy Agency standards are based upon man-made radiation fallout and breathing it and consuming it and ingesting it is good for you. That's what they're claiming in their standards. So they're talking about potassium and magnesium. They're talking about stuff that doesn't come from a reactor. They're talking about the natural stuff, which is like the man-made radiation is called man-made because it's not created by the solar system. The sun doesn't expunge it, expel it. They said the International Atomic Energy Agency's radiation standards were merely an international consensus. Inter that's even scarier, isn't it? A study has not found a safe level of radiation. There is no safe level. So he cited a study from the National Academy of Science, because that's where you go to get your throat cut, apparently. We said that one out of five workers would suffer from cancer exposed by the International Atomic Energy Agency deemed an allowable radiation level. And not everybody is going to get cancer. There's 1,800, well, he might, but there's 1,800 other diseases. Literally, the medical textbook would show up because of radiation poisoning, because you corrupt it and compromise your immune system, so you're more susceptible to pathogens and viruses that were normally harmless and innocuous and benign. The panel said there should be sufficient justification for the project, as the standards are not based on what is safe, but how great the benefit. They're based on natural stuff, natural. And so, which means they're completely dysfunctional. They shouldn't exist and should be criminally charged as crimes against humanity for doing it. And it's impossible not to win. There is no safe levels of radionuclide exposures, whether from food, water, or other sources, period, says physician. Extreme increase of mortality caused by cardiac diseases, the death rates might give the creeps to some people. So the number of deaths was up 12.5% compared to the same month of the year before, which an extra 12,695 people dying just of heart attacks. That don't scare you. Hang around, I got lots of that stuff. Hospital official in Fukushima, extremely scaring Scary data. Stroke rates are spiking in people aged 35 to 64. 3.5 times higher than before Fukushima. Stroke rates. 
uh, mass people dying, massive amounts of people dropping dead from heart attacks. These people are in 30s and 40s. A lot of people in 30s and 40s and 50s currently are showing up with severe dementia. There's a spike in Down syndrome and autism for children being born. It's not a spike. It's it's a out of control. The government reported a big, big decline in Alaska caribou. The mortality was very high after Fukushima releases because the caribou like are like the reindeer in Latvia, for instance, where they like lynching, which is known to uh, gather up the radiation and the bioaccumulate. So the animals are getting exceptional doses. Low survival rate for calves in 2011-2012. It's worrisome how quickly it happened, and they don't have an answer. Well, Fukushima is a good start. They re and if you, if you go look at all of these abnormalities, you won't see them pre-2011. You'll see them post. It's the same thing with the, with the massive uh, s uh, storms. There's a storm just hit Mexico, and it hit Mexico at 140 miles per hour sustained winds. Gusting over 210 miles per hour then. And obviously it was much more in some places, right? Where the wind funnels. If you go pre-Fukushima, you won't see any of these particular attributes. And we're seeing hurricane after hurricane. We're seeing hurricanes and typhoons and cyclones and hurricanes and typhoons and cyclones and typhoons and hurricanes. Worldwide, back to back, year after year, post-Fukushima with winds that we don't have building codes for. Japanese researchers remind me of Godzilla. 95% of the worms died. Survivors grow 10 times average size when raised on Tokyo soil, contaminated from Fukushima radioactive material. Tokyo soil, contaminated from Fukushima radioactive fallout. 95% of the worms died in the soil from Tokyo. And the survivors grew 10 times the average size. It's called gigantism. Fukushima Hospital Worker says five out of the seven babies were born with birth defects and Down syndromes or lost by miscarriage or severe congenital malformations. Fukushima nearly as serious as being attacked by nuclear weapons. It's infinitely worse than nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons is not even on the radar when it comes to the fallout from Fukushima. And nuclear was, weapon fallout was brutal on our planet. And the Daini, the twin, the evil twin, um had major releases. Uh, the buildings were flooded and had huge numbers. The only way you get the numbers was an exposure to radiation, to the fuel, right? Because they had like 3,000 tons in the basements of multiple reactors. So you had to breach the containment for that to happen. And they covered it up. They said they ran power lines from a mile away. But if you look at the infrastructure that we're talking about, uh, each nuclear power plant needs its own gas, oil, or coal plant, two of them rather, dedicated to it. So running power lines in, like a big extension cord, is, you know, it's on the exact same level, 10 miles south of the Diachi. And so it got hit with 400 mile per hour waves. It had the same attributes as Fukushima. There was zero possibility you're going to reboot the power. Everything was flooded uh, by a very powerful planet-changing event. Uh, professor, we have to surmise that the radiation may have spread to Osaka. 600 kilometers from Fukushima, uh, high levels of cesium. Every time I heard cesium, I literally almost lose my mind because it's such a... Such a dishonest thing not to mention the other isotopes or acknowledge them. Surges in airborne radioactive releases gone on for years at Fukushima exceeded 25,000 times the normal levels. There is no normal levels. And I showed you the levels earlier. You're talking about 29 million becquels a square meter. 
which is far past the 25,000 times that they're talking about. So they were making radium uh, suppositories for up in your bum. It's so evil, like, and they sold 150,000 of these creatures, these murder machines. The nuclear industry's entire legacy is despicable. It's despicable. Not a friggin' single redeeming quality in that industry. The amount of radiation of three gallons of milk from Hawaii surpasses the annual maximum contamination levels set by the EPA. Well, do you know how much milk, how quick a bunch of kids can go through three gallons of milk? It wasn't just milk, it was saturated and airborne fallout. Uh, I think I got a great map to show you for Hawaii. I've done radio shows in Hawaii on with headlines in nothing but Hawaii. Uh, yo, followed Hawaii. Well, that's all the headlines from Hawaii. Should do another video because you took down my other site, right? Oceans, jet streams, models. Video models. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, this one. This one is a great one. This is one I was looking for. So Hawaii. Hawaii is right there. See it? The bunch of islands. So when the plume comes past Hawaii, you'll watch the plume split. This is a university model. And I'm going to speed it up. Double that speed, whatever that is, to 200%. And it's based upon, this is the 17th, the 18th of March. This is uh, nine days after the earthquake. But notice how it's, when it goes past Hawaii, watch the trail that it leaves. Let me go backwards for a second. So see how, it, I'm back a bit more. Watch when it comes out and hits Hawaii. And watch how it splits. See that? And watch when that piece of the plume goes past it and it leaves this long trailing edge. This is only the 23rd of March, the 24th of March. This is 10 days after the last reactor blew up right there. That's 10 days. And we're, Hawaii is right in a friggin' worst spot because the big, the big plume, there's a big number is coming out of the, of the original numbers. And there was another phenomenon. The U.S. is receiving a steady flow of radiation from Fukushima. Yeah, and it looks like this. It's a steady flow, and that never stops. It never goes away. Think of that as a snowstorm. After 20 days, the whole planet is covered in a snowstorm. It never stops snowing, and the snow never goes away. And it does this for millions of years. Instead, call it radiation. You can't see it or smell it or hear it or feel it or taste it or touch it, pick it up or throw rocks at it. And so this is 30, um, 25 days later, basically. It never stops coming out. The model should do that for 12 years straight. See? U.S. receiving steady flow of radiation from Fukushima. The media paid little attention to the radiation of food as if the problem only involved Japan. Well... Everybody's breathing, eating, consuming it. All the insects and birds and mammals and animals, thyroid glands, for instance, were saturated. Uh, and so they stopped producing and they can't uptake any nutrition like the whales and the birds were seeing. And they die of leukemia and bizarre cancers. And another massive mistake was the salt, spraying salt waters on the reactors created this uranium compound uh, like carbon buckyballs. And it's, the technically it's called the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs. And the sulfur creates these spherical balls that are considered to look like this. And they ingest the uranium, plutonium, americium, neptunium, the strontiums. And inside of these things, and that becomes hot particles. And 
uh, it's, it's very mobile. It doesn't need the jet streams to cover the planet. Neutron leakage from active molten fuel, core producing radioactive sulfur, MOX fuel could be the neutron. That could be. The buildings are completely gone. These are other parts of the studies. Now, they knew about this unique thing in the 50s from the, the open ocean war that they had. The weapons they used on the ocean are nuclear... Like, you know, what they've done to um, the Marshallese, the Marshall Islands, the Bikini Atolls, so to speak, the Marshall Islands, there's still a million square kilometers that's too radioactive to be habitable today. Where the hell did I put that to? Right there. So the Bikini Atolls, which is their name for the cover-up, Bikini, see, you stop thinking about radiation, most people, right? Cesium-137, I just so, I so hate that word, contamination of fruits from the northern Marshall Islands, extended over a million square kilometers and severely impacted the habitability of the affected tolls. Radioactive fallout from the nuclear testing, which is, that's a nuclear war. When you contaminate a million square kilometers, that's a nuclear war. That's not almost a nuclear war. That's a nuclear war. And so what they've done to the Marshall Islands, what they've done to uh, the Christmas Islands, what they've done to the French Polynesian Islands, and the French Polyne what the French done to the French Polynesian Islands was the animosity equivalent of a, Nagasaki bomb every week for 12 years. Massive radioactive waste buildup in Tokyo suburbs. Fukushima and recriticality. So when you, and we see iodine even today showing up, 131, detected in four locations, Tokyo, Iwati, Nagano, Niigata, which meant that's a, a ongoing chain reaction. Huge plumes. And we know it's still going on today. My goodness. You know, we've never had an event like this before. And we have multiple reactors melted down. And something we've never seen before. Eight fuel pools, each of them with five to ten reactor cores. And each of these reactor cores are equal to 100 Chernobyls. They're pure uranium, pure plutonium. And reactor three is a monstrous hideous uh, mixed oxide fuel disease factory. And TEPCO was fined a measly $4.4 million for destroying the future of all species in humanity. All species in humanity. And so anybody that's joining, because this will be a premiere, I'll play the video I played at the beginning again for people. We picked up new mic equipment today, so if my... Now, I shot probably 15 short videos and try to find a balance with the new equipment. I'm going to show it to you now. But by the moral, I have read the books, and I'll get quite a bit better at it. And by Sunday, I should I should correct any problems we're seeing today. But, um, it's October the 11th. That's from this afternoon. October 11th. I'm at uh, Lone and McQuaid. We got a good deal on uh, some mic equipment. It's uh, 555. So we got a new preamp for the microphone and we got a, a really good deal on a display for an EQ. Didn't come with the case, but I get an extra year's warranty with it. And so that's a big deal. We're gonna to try to fix that freaking microphone. We got a fantastic microphone. We got a sure microphone, see? But um, a lot of my equipment is old and it's, it's just not keeping up with each other. So hopefully this will make a difference for everybody. That's the plan. That's the plan. That's the plan, Stan. 
don't need to be kind, right? Uh, so I struggled for about an hour to get this stuff to work. <laughs> Started off with I couldn't find the right extension cord to, I just couldn't figure it out. And I didn't, uh, the equalizer was on display, it was never used. And so I got a really good deal on it. Like 555 for some professional gear is actually not very much. And both of these were on sale. And uh, I'm, I, I like the tones I'm hearing back here. It'll get better over the next couple of shows. Hopefully I didn't screw up the first show too much. But because I have to shoot the video in advance, right, then I have to transfer it out to another computer to crunch it to crunch it from um, from 60, 70, 80. This show would be 90 gigabytes or something because it's over two hours. So I need to get it from 90 gigabytes down to one gigabyte or less or around there. And then upload it to YouTube. Then by the time it uploads to YouTube, you got to wait for the video to to get to the high quality before you see it on your end. Now, I used to be able to just live stream for 10 years. I would just live stream the show. The nuclear industry hacked me on August the 24th, and they'd done the same thing to my Rumble, and I can't live stream. So I have to work five extra hours a day to bring you the same story I've been bringing you for 10 years. Now it takes an extra five hours. And um, that's a big mistake because it means I'm going to get really good, really better much better at what I'm doing because I'm putting all this extra work in. So ultimately, you're building up a huge amount of tolerance in me. And that's a big mistake. You were way better off letting me live stream. You'll, you'll definitely live to regret this because I notice I'm getting better and more committed every day than I ever was. You lit a fire under me, nuke tarts. <laughs> And so I'm, hopefully that we get the microphone figured out. Over the next few days, the equipment and get the nightmare we've been having under control. <laughs> I'll get there. I mean, we, we just blew my October's money to survive on this equipment. It, it's got to work. I got no choice. So I will make it work, I can guarantee you. Have a great night. Have a great day tomorrow. We'll see everybody tomorrow night for the last show of the week. We'll catch everybody on the other side. Have a great night.